He said $15,000 was no big deal, but it's costing me my future. My decision to report my dad for fraud is tearing our family apart. So my dad stole my identity and opened three credit cards in my name. He told me that since I'm young, I can do without sir a few years. I found that my dad used my information to open three credit cards over the last year. So when I went to get a pre-approval for a mortgage, I was told by the lender they wouldn't be able to give me a home loan because of the defaulted credit cards. Um, and they also say I probably wouldn't be able to get a loan from any lender because of it and gave me a sheet of paper explaining what I'd need to do in order to fix it. So when I tried disputing the cards, one of which is already in collections, the disputes got closed out as the debts were verified. I told my divorced parents about it and their answers were pretty wildly different. So my dad said that these things happen and that I should be more careful in the future with my social security number. Seeing as I've always been careful, that made me pretty mad. My mom said she thinks my dad might have something to do with it since opening credit cards in her name had a part to play in their divorce. She told me he ran up about $50,000 in credit card debt on secret credit cards. A few days ago, I ended up casually telling my dad I'm going to have to file a police report for the credit cards. So he told me I probably shouldn't do that because $15,000 isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. When I told him it was keeping me from buying a house, he said I could just wait a few years until they fell off of my credit report. He said it would only take another four and a half years. When I told him I obviously couldn't wait that long, so I had to file the police report, he straight up told me not to do it and to just be more careful in the future. Once I told him I already got the paperwork together from the credit agencies, he told me he had opened the cards to pay for living expenses over the last year. He said his work slowed down a little bit, but he'd do what he could to help pay it off. He said it would ruin his life if he went to jail. I'm leaning towards going to the police anyway, but I didn't write that minute. I have everything in front of me today to go make the report. I guess I just want to make sure turning it over to the police is the right thing to do here, especially if I'm wanting to buy a house this year. Top comments. Comment one, report him for fraud. OP, that's what I'm leaning towards. I'm realizing if I want to buy a house, I can't have those accounts on my credit. Comment two, if he wasn't your dad, you'd have reported him already, right? Well, think about this. Why didn't he give you the same respect and not ruin your credit because he's your father? Update one, I spent about half of the day reading everyone's comments and it pretty much solidified what I was going to do. The process itself was pretty easy. I went to the police department and the person at the front desk had me wait about 10 minutes before an officer came out. Um, we talked for about 15 minutes and he made copies of all of the paperwork I gave him. He told me the case would be assigned to a detective on Tuesday and gave me a pamphlet about how to contact the credit agencies. I was given a report number and was told I could use that now to start disputing the accounts. A detective is going to follow up with me in the next couple of weeks. I asked what would end up happening to my dad, and the officer said it looked pretty clear-cut to him, but the charging decision is 100% with the state attorney's office. So it's that if they decide to pursue charges, he'll likely get a warrant put out for his arrest. He also said typically if this is his first felony, he's probably going to get some sort of pretrial diversion with court supervision or probation. He probably won't go to jail for years, but if he gets picked up on a warrant, he's going to spend at least a little bit of time behind bars. I've decided I'm okay with that because it's obvious to me he did this purposefully. He's never been arrested before, so hopefully this is a wake-up call for him. At the same time, he completely did this to himself. I'll update whenever I learn more. Top comments, comment one, play stupid games, win stupid Stupid prizes. Sincerely hope everything works out well for you. OP, I think it will. From what I understand, it might take a month or two for the cards to come off of my credit, but once they do, my credit score should shoot up. Comment two, well done OP. I was so mad on your behalf reading the first post. It would take everything in me not to use his words against him. Jail time? It's just a few years. You've ruined my life. No, you did it by trying to ruin mine. I hope the marks come off your credit report like it's made of Teflon. Good luck on your home ownership journey. Update two, there's been some good, a little bad, and a little real bad progress the past few days. To the good, I used my report number and disputed every account. When I checked my credit last, which everyone should be doing regularly, the one with the lowest balance was already off of my account. Then the other cards in the collection account are still showing, but I have hoped they'll be falling off in the next few weeks. I also received a call from someone at the prosecutor's office who had a couple of extra questions for me and asked if I would be willing to testify if that one. So I said yes, and they said they would be making a decision on their charges before the end of the month. To the bad, obviously, someone talked to my dad about this because the last time he talked, he scolded me for going to the police and hasn't talked to me since. And one of my brothers was also pretty mad at me about it and hasn't talked to me in over a week. So the rest of my siblings and my mom understood where I was coming from. The real bad, one of my other brothers, not the one who was pissed, found two open credit cards on his credit which weren't his. He checked his credit score for the first time in a couple of years and he said it was down about 150 points from where it used to be. He's now in the process of dealing with that. 
He doesn't have any positive proof yet that it was our dad, but the fingers are pointing in that direction. This still blows my mind that a dad could do this to his own children. I'm moving forward though, I still hope to be able to purchase a house before the end of the year. Additional information from OP. Also, I think all of my other siblings, there are six of us, are checking their credit too. Probably for the best. New update. This is going to be my final update as it seems like this has gone viral and hit a few different big websites. I'm happy to say my credit has completely returned to normal. All of the disputed accounts are now gone. Obviously, I'm excited about this since it gives me a solid financial future. I also received a letter from the prosecutor's office two weeks ago, and they said they are going forward with a charge of what is basically identity theft. I spoke with an assistant prosecutor, and they explained they'd be putting out a warrant shortly, but that as a first-time offender, they'd probably offer a misdemeanor charge and a plea. My dad was arrested last Friday after a traffic stop. He got out of jail the next day and has a new court date in late August, according to the public records website. He called me and told me I'm dead to him and to never contact him again. My brother who found credit cards opened in his name has made us made a police report as well. But apparently the addresses are different on the accounts. He was told it was unlikely it would be prosecuted, but he's working on getting them off of his credit. Additional information from OP just wanted to give everyone who commented in my other posts a shout out. You have all given me the courage to do this. I'm going to be deleting this throwaway because I really hope to put all of this behind me between the news articles and having no contact with my dad. I don't let things like this sneak up on you. It breaks my heart to do this to my dad, but he did this to himself. Now to the next story, story two. Am I the A for telling my fiancé that her wedding dress choice is too extravagant and suggesting cheaper alternatives? We are getting married in July of this year, the venue is booked, and the wedding is pretty much sorted. Emma has been researching dresses and has a little scrapbook of lots of dresses she likes for ideas but is now looking to buy. All that's left to get is the bridesmaid dresses and her wedding dress. We jointly put aside 10000 each for the wedding. Everything is paid and we have 6000 left over which I think could go towards the honeymoon on top of the honeymoon fund we already had. So we aren't the extravagant type at all, then comes the time for Emma to pick her dress. Seriously, the Korean board is a them from your press, the towels are poor credits and pie curtains by them for Shalem or Sheer Daggard. I know everything is more expensive when it has the term wedding attached to it. Um, what I wasn't expecting was a $950 dress plus $120 veil. I'm using my dad's old tux he used for his wedding to my mom, just had it taken in a little, Emma can't use her mom's dress as her, and her mom both say the style has an abs. It has an ulmul, which is fair. I had a quick Google around at dresses online and there were so many, and so many just like the one Emma wants for like $5,100. I'm not trying to get her to cheap out on her dress, but she will literally wear it once. One dress for over $1,000 is just insane that would fund our honeymoon. I tried to show her some dresses I found on a recommended app called Wish and others on websites, but she was having none of it. She is very slender but apparently wants it specially fitted. It turned nasty unfortunately because I said I refused to drop such a large amount of money on a dress, and she argued that she is using her own money for the dress, which isn't strictly true as we ate about to marry and our finances will be joined. So then her mom had to get involved, they offered to pay for the dress, but it's not a case of not being able to afford it. It's a dress, there are identical ones online at a fraction of the cost. I thought she would be ecstatic to learn there are identical dresses for a fraction of the cost, but she was really angry and upset. And is there something I am seriously missing? Because after we argued about the dress, Emma has been extremely cold towards me. So then yesterday she said if I want her to cheap out on her wedding dress on her wedding day, that she needs to really consider if we're a good match for marriage. I was blown away that she would say that over a dress. I told her she's like a toddler throwing a tantrum over a sparkly toy she can't have. That was a mistake as she left to stay with her parents. Yeah, who called to tell me I am much more than an asshole, told her fiance can get a similar dress for around $100 with shipping online but wants to blow over $1,000 at a local wedding dress boutique. Am I the asshole for saying to get a cheaper one online? Edit. Emma found some idea that it was a mistake to post here, and I'm sorry I posted our problems on Reddit. I yada the top replies from OP, comment one, but the gowns I found on Wish looked very professionally made. And very similar to the she's picked. Comment 2 I mentioned the secondhand wedding dress store, and she said no without even going to take a look. Comment 3 That's not fair. I would never tell her what to wear. She can wear what she wants. It is the absurd price that I'm against. Comment 4 See, I can definitely understand caring about the quality of a dress. If it's a work dress or a regularly worn formal dress, I think what everyone's missing is that this will be worn for one day only. Relevant comments. Ah. Uh, Emma, ask yourself if your fiancé's behavior here is a one-off. There are some concerning things here, his insistence on controlling your purchase, made with your money, even if it's funded by your parents. Is he controlling in other ways? Has he ever been insistent on you spending your time and money only in ways he approves of, 
And does he usually lash out when you don't do what he wants? The way he's resorting to name-calling because you wouldn't capitulate to his demands, calling you a toddler throwing a tantrum, instead of communicating with you respectfully. This is made especially worse by the fact that his demands are unreasonable and stem from a fundamental ignorance about the subject, wedding gown cost, what knockoffs are and why they're a bad idea, etc., and that he's shutting down your attempts to educate him. Does he normally communicate with you openly and respectfully? Does he normally get angry and verbally attack you when you disagree with him? Are you normally able to have conversations with him on difficult topics that are calm, respectful, and productive, even when you disagree? Maybe you're both cracking under wedding planning strain, and this is an out-of-character moment that you can work through, but maybe this is pointing to a larger pattern. Proceed with caution. Remember you're about to enter into a pretty intense legal and social contract with this man, and that you're signing up for a lifetime of conflict resolution with this person in particular. The way you both approach disagreement and handle conflict now reflects how you'll be likely to continue to do so going forward. Now may be the time to double-check with yourself if this is the right move. Eat it. After reading through the comments, I would also encourage you to look at his behavior here on this Reddit post. His response to new information is not to take it on board and process it, but to double down, plug his fingers in his ears, close his eyes, and refuse to listen. The lengths he'll go to to avoid admitting he was mistaken are a bit troubling. It may also be worth asking yourself if there's a reason someone who is so insistent on always being right may have for seeking out a partner who's a decade younger. I'm wishing you all the best, and I hope this works out for you. AP, I thought have a look through the comments to see if anything explained why Emma has blocked me and her phone is ringing through to voicemail. I seriously can't believe people started a witch hunt over a dress. I watched some YouTube videos of wish wedding dresses, and yes, wishes are trash. I got it, I was wrong about that site. But to end up blocked because you have all told her I'm abusive and manipulative is just vile. I called her parents' house and the line's off the hook. So if you see this Emma call me, please, I won't shout, I won't get mad, I just want to end this crap. Get whatever dress you want, I see that I was wrong. I'm sorry. Spelling bad had some whiskey. Can you blame me after this? Eat it too. Based on Josh's newest comment about you blocking him on Messenger, it sounds like you're taking some time and space to think things over. I think that's a really good move. There's a quiz from the Love is Respect project that may help clarify your thinking about whether this is a healthy, nurturing relationship. I hope everything turns out well for you, Emma, whatever you decide to do. There's a whole community of people here rooting for you to be happy. The edit three, it looks like OP has been banned from IATA. He just sent me a furious, invective-filled PM blaming the sub for what's happening in his personal relationship and reiterating that abusive behavior is normal and fine, so I guess he's learned nothing. According to the PM, Emma's dad just called him and chewed him out, so it sounds like at least she has a strong familial support system. Transcript of the PM banned. I'm now banned from Am I the Asshole and good fucking riddance. Her dad just called to cuss me the fuck out. Can you believe I've been trying to not fucking cuss so I don't get banned so I can at least defend myself than banned for no reason? I live in the real world where when people are angry, they yell, they save money where they can, and they don't fucking run away and block you. Fuck this fuck it all and fuck Emma for believing strangers on the internet over her two fucking years cupcakes underscore and underscore vodka. Emma, if you see this, run for the fucking hills. Men who are almost 40 marry 27-year-olds often because they are manipulative and going to pull shit a woman his age won't put up with. He's too old for you. You are seeing signs of this behavior now. 950 bucks for a wedding dress ain't shit. He is already trying to control and manipulate you and your finances, and you aren't even married yet. Don't go through with it. AP, you're a massive asshole and she shouldn't marry you. OP, wow, thanks. Seriously, she has been keeping up with this thread because she told me not to take it down. She wanted to read the replies, and now she's blocked me on Messenger and my calls go to voicemail. So thanks a lot. Everyone couldn't have left it at Yida. Legitimately out for blood. Mob mentality if ever I saw it. To the bride, I will change the name despite his inability to do the same. I don't really care if he sees this, but he isn't sub to relationships. I literally don't know where to start. My fiancés will call Greg. I don't know what came over him. It's completely insane. We are getting married this summer. The argument started over my wedding dress. I picked a very simple and traditional gown that was already discounted as it is an X sample gown. My absolute idiots decided to post to a subreddit asking for opinions or more likely validation on whether it was being unreasonable. My dress is under $1,000 but will come to around $1,500 with alterations. We have over $7,000 left over in our budget. That's another thing that seriously upset me that he lied in his post multiple times. 
I make a much higher salary than him, so we agreed he would put $5,000 towards the wedding, and I put in the rest, but why lie? Do I ask opinions if you skewed the details? I had absolutely no problem with this, as he makes just above the minimum wage. So the thread got way too much attention. I had already gone to my parents because I was angry about him calling me immature and shouting about me being spoiled. I also happened to find the thread shortly after he made it because not only did he use my real name, his throwaway was his real name followed by his alarm pin. He sent me a text saying that he wasn't the asshole in this situation and I just knew he would post it on Reddit. It's not the first time he's posted on Reddit about stuff. But nothing of this magnitude. Anyway, I don't know what to do. There are people online now claiming to be me, and it's been shared on Twitter and Facebook, and I'm just absolutely mortified. He got totally hammered last night and called my parents. And my dad had to hang up on him because he was screaming down the phone and my mom was disgusted. Um, I can't get my money back on the venue or anything. I recently started taking antidepressants because I've been feeling low, but now I just feel empty. I very just feel empty. Hear me, Dad. I'd be seeing mall. By the way, beat. Wait, well, can't get my money back on the vessel. So this whole thing was about the cost of my dress, and he suggested I use the Wish app to get an identical gown. First, he refused to listen to me, saying that Wish is garbage, but he also argued it to death in the comments. I read every single comment in that thread, and it was like being punched in the gut. I can't get over the odd lies either. He gave out my real name and his butt lied about the gap and budget. I am 23, he is 43, admittedly, he looks much, much younger, and for the first few weeks dating, I thought he was in his early 30s. We also have only been together a year. Not two years, I think he said, and I'm starting to think this was all too fast. I need help, I need advice, I know I'm quite possibly pot-calling the kettle by posting to Reddit, but I post here a lot usually anyway. And all the fake accounts claiming to be me might throw him off anyway. I might be slow replying as I start work in an hour thanks all ex tell Dr. Fiance posted to Reddit to get opinions on the price of my wedding dress, but used my real name and it all blew up. Both people are creating fake accounts pretending to be me and he has devolved to calling me names and getting drunk and calling my family. He also lied about a lot of details in the post. How do I handle this calmly? Three months later to ex Fiance made a post. A few months back I was going to be married and long story short things were called off. She wanted to end things, I didn't. And I feel like I've lost all of my trust in women. I don't want to feel like this anymore. I was dating someone called Isabel until last week. She's really amazing and kind, but the second she heard about my ex and the fiasco that surrounded it, she ghosted me. And it becomes a pattern at some point, no matter how close we get, they hear about it from a friend, it comes up somehow and they bail. I just want to know how to behave or what I can do to make things work. My last gay of Casey, when she broke up with me, she said that I hadn't changed from who I was when my fiance left me. But I have. I hardly drink at all now. My job is steady and I'm a good guy, but I think the issue is that I'm suffering from small town syndrome. Everyone knows everyone here back asswards, little town it is. Please, please give me advice on putting this behind me. I am honestly desperate. My life was about to move towards a phase and now I'm stuck in limbo. I need a girl to fill that place so I can move forward with my life.